right, here we go. One, two, three. One for luck. One, two, a new documentary out, Matthew Briggs, A Journey of Discovery. Basically, the story is that poor old Matthew, for whatever reason, slipped further and further down the divisions and now finds himself in the eighth tier of English football. And this documentary covers all of that. So much so, we have a camera right now with us here in studio and we're filming as part of this documentary in here. Simon Jordan, you're on camera. There hey. it is to your right. <laughs> so Matthew Briggs and Adam Leventhal join us live uh, this morning here at Talk Sport. Matthew Briggs, good morning. Good morning. Um, for whatever reason, it all went wrong. So what is your version of events? Why did it spiral in the downward direction? When I look back on my career, um, you know 16 years and 65 days such a young age and I know everyone's journey is different and everyone's story is different but for me I feel like I got too much too young and maybe the support system around me maybe wasn't good enough. Did you almost feel like you were reconnecting with the, with the industry today by sort of coming out and, and speaking about it? Yeah definitely I feel it's refreshing I feel like I'm obviously reconnecting with the whole of the football world and just telling my story and football to hear. And this must all get quite emotional, does it? For you, working so closely with Matthew, I'm quite sure you know Kenneth is a very close friend. The story was sat there in front of me and I thought we've got to show this, we've got to investigate it, we've got to almost go back through the, the steps from Matthew's career from making his debut back in 2007 and try and learn the reasons why it's turned out uh, the way it has. And, you know, just as a little side note, he's still only 28, he's still only a boy, and he's still got a chance to, to kick on. Is it genuinely feeling like therapy for you, this, this process? Yeah, it is. And um, by doing it, I'm also seeing that I'm, I've actually not been forgotten about, and people are actually eager to see me get back to where I belong and um, erase any doubts that I had in my head in the first place. This chimes and accords directly relational to experiences I had because I gave a, uh, a young kid called John Bostock his debut at 15 years of age. Uh, we were playing in the championship at the time and he was courted. I was offered a couple of million quid by Barcelona for him at 14 years of age and, and Tottenham were a club that came in for him and eventually took his services. My experience of that situation was outside influence, outside agendas, people around young players that are not giving them the right advice. And I want to see if that's what's happened to you. Like, like you said, Man United was interested in me. Yeah. And as a young child, that was my dream to play for yeah. United. As soon as I heard Man United are interested in me, I'm like, right. And that's what Boston, Tottenham yeah. was his as well. Yeah, I, was, oh, I want to go. So you thought you were going? Yeah, I, was, I wanted to go. I was ready, packed. <laughs> no, but, well, you would be. Yeah, yeah, of course, I get that. But when, uh, obviously, Fulham didn't want me to go and wouldn't allow me to go, um, that sort of affected me mentally and I, thought I just sort of become down about it and let it affect my, my mood in football. wasn't quite at it, at the races, as you would say. Just head was gone. Matthew, I don't want to push it too much in this direction, but tell me how low did you go? How bad did it get? Because at one stage you thought, I'm at Fulham now. I'm not even 17. I'm going to play for Manchester United. I might play for Bayern Munich. Then where did it take you? Well, let's just say this time last year, I was working on a building site. And there's no disrespect to the trade because sure. I learned a lot doing it. But from playing Premier League at 16 years and 65 days, thinking you, you're going to make it, you're going to fulfill your dream to then be working on a building site labouring. That knocked me for six. <laughs> and the importance of helping just one person who might have been listening today or may well be watching the, the documentary, how important is that to you? very important I mean that it's not just about me the purpose of this documentary is like I said before just to, to help any young player that is on the same path that I was and you know to, to tell my mistakes and things that went wrong for me and hopefully they can eliminate that from, from their career. I hate to dig with the client bit but that's what people like that's yeah. what sells in this day and age people like to see these stories and they like to see re-emergence as well yeah, yeah. and the fact you're here is a re-emergence um, but where do you think the disconnect has come from your ability which put you at a certain position and the position you find yourself at now, where is this disconnected? Well, it's certainly not the ability. Um, That's my point. It's definitely psychologically. And I look back and I think I felt that I was entitled. Yeah. Where I made my debut so long, I kind of lived off the back of that. 
for many years after that. Why Matthew's actually playing now down in the eighth tier is that your last professional club was at Chesterfield. Just explain mm. why, because I think that's a key point to actually understand why the decline has now left you almost miles away from, from the Premier League due to, due to your, your misses. Yeah, so um, my last year at Colchester, um, my son was born three months early. So he was two pound four, size of your hand. Um, was in intensive care for a very long time. So I had to take a lot of time off training and miss games and, and what, whatnot. Then uh, obviously agreed to part ways with Colchester, um, signed for Chesterfield and repercussions of all the stress and what's gone on. My missus became very ill and um, got so bad that she was bed bound. She couldn't even get out of bed and that went on for over a year. But I had to cut my contract short and we had to take her away to, to oh, get treatment. And talking about such personal stuff on national radio, yeah. are you just feeling like it's a very cathartic experience? Yeah, I mean, I just feel like I'm just just ready to just break free, just, you know, tell everybody, like, bravery, just, it's okay not to be okay. If you need help, you only got to ask, and that's all you can do at the end of the day. It's only going to benefit you. By learning a lot from this documentary, Matthew's in a far better place to actually kick on with his career. So hopefully there is a there is a, a positive outcome to this. We will see. We're making it as we speak, so we'll yeah, see what happens. As we see. We're yeah. watching more, yes, <laughs> than you're filming today. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, I did. First time on national radio is a an experience, good experience for me, and yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. We hope it's on an upward spiral from this point onwards. Adam Leventhal, always good to see you, mate. Thanks. Matthew Briggs, A Journey of Discovery. You want to watch this, catch it, because it's worth a watch, no doubt about that. And Matthew, nothing like coming in to talk sport and getting therapy from Simon <laughs> Just when you were feeling a bit, well, I'm not too sure about things, you've got to listen to that. But uh, I tell you what, it talks a lot of sense. Matthew Briggs and Jim White on talk sport. Well done guys, well done, brilliant.